welcome to Lumwax TV uh, from the train. I've never started a YouTube video on this mode of transport before, it's usually in a car, but uh, as we know from previous video, Little Irish was broken. Uh, I've not had it for five weeks now, but Chris at Right Tune has called me up and said that the car is fixed, fingers crossed, so it's had that intermittent problem. We'll find out what the problem was, how the guys have fixed it, and the way forward here for what is a high mileage Porsche 996. Let's go and get the car. And here it is, sports fans. But before we find out the issue, let's have a catch up with boss man Chris. Chris. Hello. How you doing, mate? Yeah. Wicked. Yeah, yeah, I'm very good, thank you. I want to say thank you for looking after this and for like uh, taking on the headache, really, because I know it's been uh, challenging yeah. for, for, for you as a business owner, for me as an owner. What I really want to get across to people watching this and, and like especially in front of you is, you know, expectation for me as an owner, I'm a realist, I like to think. So I've dropped a car off with an intermittent problem. I totally understand the point of view that you have, which is it's so difficult as a business and as a specialist to diagnose a problem that's intermittent and not rearing its head when you've had the car, right? Yeah, it's very, very difficult with an intermittent problem um, and the car's 25 or 26 years old. So everything you do look at it's usually a little bit tired anyway. Yeah. So unless you uh, fire the cannon at it and change every part blind, you, you may always, always find, but obviously you will test things, but it's, it is tired. And that is, yeah, that is, for us, it's a nightmare. If there's an intermittent problem, and even you brought it around and said, you know, what the symptoms are like? Red hot, it does it every time. I've just driven over here from Essex. It's red hot. The last half an hour, I left it in third gear. I was banging it off the limiter. And by the way, he, you do drive this, don't you, really hard? So he said he'd been banging off the limiter <laughs> in third gear for half an hour. So he'll definitely do this. Watch, watch it. Turns it off. He's like, just wait 10 minutes. It won't start. <laughs> Fired up immediately. And you're like, God's yeah. sake. Yeah. So we, um, then, we then left it because I said, right, okay, heat soak. That, yeah. That'll do it. So leave it for 10 minutes. We had a cup of tea. Um, and the same thing, it fired up, no fired problem. Up perfect. So, yeah, like, you know. But again, Which is frustrating for you as well, because you want to prove to us, and, then, and you're probably thinking, he must think I'm a nutter. It's funny, because obviously, you know, like, we, we know each other, so you, I really valued, like, the updates on WhatsApp, but it was funny, you know, you'd message, and you'd be like, this bloody car is just, like, not breaking, yeah, you know. Perfect. And when it did break, we were like, yeah! So I, I, was, I was in a pub in Dublin <laughs> with my brother. What was funny is, you know, talking about it, and then I got this message of you in the pub saying, I've got some good news, your car's just broken down. And we were like, how perverse is that? But we, do you know what I mean? I think I know these cars and I had absolutely no idea. Like genuinely, it's, it can properly stump me, you know, which is why we kind of did that, that shout out video asking for a bit of help. And I appreciate and understand from a business point of view, particularly when you've got the internet watching, that that is quite difficult. So it it, difficult, kudos to you. No, no, it's fine and I appreciate that. But and I think everybody else does and it is just important to explain that it, it is difficult and it is an, intermi and it is an intermittent problem and, it, and it's just been realistic. Like we don't have a magic wand. Mm -hmm. I've been so impressed with your kind of belt and braces approach well, to it. To While test. bearing in mind my wallet, that's the other point because yeah, it's easy yeah. to just we'll just replace everything. Yeah, well, we, everything, we, don't, we don't do that. We want to repair a problem that we see. Yeah, um, yeah. And also to stress that like, oh, it must be this, it must be that. This is why we've gone through the whole car and been as, as vigilant as we can be because as time goes on, you can find something to go, do you know what, I've never seen this before, but it's caused this problem. We were working on a three litre turbo the other day. My father, Joe, and another well-respected Porsche specialist in the industry, an air cool specialist, and they found something wrong with the, with the uh, K-Jet and they all looked at it, and these guys, my dad's 17, the other guy's in his 60s, and they both went, have you ever seen this before? And they both were like, no. Really? Yeah, no. Yeah. So, and that's what we'll start finding with these. As they get older, we'll start seeing things fail that we've not seen before yeah. that are causing odd problems. Yeah. I, did, I said to Joe earlier on, like, I know there are 996s out there with more miles than this, but I do feel like this yeah. car is a bit of a trailblazer just because of how it's used. So it will do daily driving, but it's also been to 11 different countries on road trips, done track days, etc., etc. So it is mechanically pushed quite hard. We hope it's fixed. 
it might not be. It's down to me to stress test it now, I guess, and, and see where we go. It. Not done it since, so, and we found lots of problems, so that's a good positive. Again, as you know, I drive past a lot of specialists to, to, to come here because I really value your expertise, uh, your transparency, your honesty as well. Like with, with these cars, you know, these are all our babies in a way, right? We all care for these cars greatly. So like you, you, you use people who you trust, you know, and kind of if anything, this scenario has only kind of actually um, enhance that for me to be honest you know because I, I feel I feel I feel like elsewhere I could have gone I could have given them the car I could have possibly spent five times as much and we could still have the problem yeah. because it's intermittent right so like that's yeah that's how I'm feeling on it I guess yeah you can throw the you know the kitchen sink at it and it will cost you a lot of money and it may, and it may not resolve the problem that's why sometimes although it may be more lengthy it's better to approach it from a sensible point of view and find the issue if it was got to go out if it was a race car and it's got to go out you would change everything yeah, i'd yeah. change the wiring loom the engine the fuel system and throw it all away because you don't have that time for the road car i'm doing what you're doing it makes sense to approach it from a more sensible point of view and try and locate the issue but no i appreciate you uh, you know your continued support no, so it's, it's great, mate. It's all content. So the, the people that win here are the internet. So what was the issue with Little Irish? I know it's been a challenge. Uh, we'll talk later on in the video about the fact that the car's just not failed since you've had the car. Was it 110 miles, you said? Done 110 miles in it, and it has, well, it did fail on what I've just explained, but not in the scenario that was explained to me. Um, yeah, but once in 110 miles, it did this particular problem. So it's been a bit of a challenge to try and find it. Yeah, um, right, yeah, yeah. We think, we think we're there. Okay, so. so what is slash was the problem? I, I don't think it was any one thing. You had s several small issues. So to start with, I checked the fuel pressure. Hot, cold, um, as per the uh, Porsche manual, it was all absolutely fine. Um, check the quantity test as well, because you, you can check the pressure, but you can also check what the pump's actually delivering. Check that hot and cold, they were all in spec. Check the fuel pressure regulator, hot, cold. <laughs> That was all doing what it should do. Then I sort of went along the lines of checking the vacuum system, because just to make sure that was working. We had low vacuum. Basically, this it should be between 19 to sort of 22 inches of mercury. They measure vacuum in inches of mercury. You had 12. Right, okay. So I thought, was that well, hot? Because we only measured well, it cold. Well, yeah, I checked it hot and cold, it was the okay. same. Yeah. So I thought, well, obviously that's not right. So I went on a bit of a manhunt trying to test the whole system, as you can imagine. Um, did a uh, leak test on it, I didn't show up anything. Um, various checks, checked all the changeover valves for the resonance flat, that's that one there. Mm -hmm. Checked all the little rubber connectors. And then I, I, I took the, this is the, the elbow for the um, brake servo. And when I took it apart, it was quite slack. I thought that's a bit odd. So it's a tenner. I thought, we're just gonna put a new one on it. Put it on nice and tight, checked it that instantly raised the vacuum right up to about 16 inches of mercury. So you had a leak there. Okay. Um, so that obviously improved. Still not right, but it improved the, the, the vacuum system on that front. And then where did I go? Then I started checking the EVAP system. You know, you had the, you had the squeak. Yes. Historically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a solenoid in the front um, carbon canister, and there's this valve here. Mm -hmm. They call that the purge valve. Basically, what that does is it releases vapor from the carbon canister into the back of the throttle body under certain scenarios. So basically what the EVAP system does is burn off the vapor in the canister. It's an, it's an emissions thing basically. Yeah, Instead okay. of going to atmosphere, yeah. puts it back into the engine, burns it off again. So I took it off and checked it with a 12 volt for about 30 times. And once out of those 30 times, it didn't click. Right, okay. So I thought, okay. So I checked it again, 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 and again. Another time it, it sort of half clicked. So I thought, all right, I'm putting a new one on it. You know, it wasn't very much money. It's faulty at some, certain times. So I put one on it. And also what I'd noticed on, on your computer, on, on the fault phones, you had lambda problem, lambda faults. Um, and what that is, 
was to do with basically is this releasing too much carbon canister vapor from the carbon canister into the back of the throttle body and it was confusing the lambda sensors. Right, yeah. You haven't got that fault anymore. That fault is now gone. Now you'd replace yeah, those last year, but you even said at the time, you know, this very probably won't be the issue. No. It's a symptom. It was a symptom, but you know. also yours, they were they were lazy on the key. Yeah, they were, actually yeah. the voltages and they were lazy. It wasn't like I changed them for no reason. Yeah, they yeah, just, yeah, yeah. They were lazy. But anyway, that's so that has cured that fault with the lambda sensors and also you said it wouldn't start hot mm -hmm. if that's stuck open that's bleeding loads of extra air into the back of the throttle body so the math's confused because it, it's got more air in the engine than it, than it reads so i think that was your problem with your hot start issue right okay. as i've not experienced it it's been absolutely golden ever since so <laughs> <laughs> so that was a fault as long with your elbow for that being slightly loose. Okay. We also did what you call a volumetric efficiency test, which tests the efficiency of the engine, basically the, the volume of air going in versus the capacity of the engine. Okay. I won't bore you, you can go online and Google that <laughs> if you really want to look, read all about it. But basically, you go up the road, full throttle, it reads between the math, the intake air temperature sensor, and you, there's an equation online you do, gives you a percentage. Anything over 75%, is what you're looking for. Yours was 65%. Right, okay. Which means, basically what that means is it, it could either be worn, not heavily, but the engine being worn out, which was probably half while your vacuum's not completely what it should be because the engine's not as efficient as it once was. Yeah, yeah. It's not horrendous, but it's not quite as efficient as it once was. So that was another check we'd done. That was before I did the elbow. Done that, and when we really checked it, it had gone up and to just within sort of, it was 72 or 73 percent so it's sort of on the edge of what you'd expect i took your throttle body off as well to have a look at it because oh, well i had to take that off to take tire lie i took that off to change your um oil filler which we, we know was broken anyway yes as you yeah. left it here for a, you know a decent amount of time i thought well, i'm just going to fix this properly so we Wicked. put a new one in it thank you that's a 997 part it where is, it's been redesigned it's a 997 one it's, they moved the, co the concertina further down which i think because it's less prone to breaking down there here they leak as you know i had to take this off to change it i had this in the ultrasonic tank cleaned it right out put some new o-rings on on the pipe here put it back together then i went on another man hunt of checking every <laughs> single sensor you can pump a stick at throttle position sensor check that so that's that controls the idle control valve by telling the throttle if it's wide open or yeah. closed for instance yeah check your in your air temperature sensor for the engine bay because that so check that that's fine Checked your throttle idle, idle control valve. Now, that was operating, because you checked it yourself with your friend, didn't you? Yes, yeah. So I double checked it, and it was working, but... A bit sticky. It's a bit sticky. I stuck it through the ultrasonic cleaner, tested it again. It wasn't good enough, to be honest with you. It's had a new one. It wasn't working quite right. Um, and as you want this thing to be as reliable as it possibly can be for a 25-year-old 911. Yeah. Um, it had one. It's worth pointing out that this has an idle control valve because it's a cable throttle car. When it switched to e-gas, it got rid of it. So if, if you've got a, a car with e-gas, 996, don't worry about this bit, right? If you have a, an early 996, a cable car, uh, if you need this part, it's about 600 quid. Now, if you need an idle control valve for pretty much any other car, yeah. it's about 20 quid. I know, I know. I was, we you know? Was, we were saying, I, I, I used to have an old Saxo back in the day, and I had to put a new one on that. It was like 35 pounds. Yeah, this, this yeah. It's like 600 quid. It does the same thing. I looked at the Porsche part. I then started chasing the Bosch part number to try and find it. I, I couldn't, so you reluctantly got to pay Porsche, the full whack. What else have I checked? Change your Y lead when I took the to do the, the feel for the net, I noticed some corrosion on it. We okay. spoke about that and we said if, it, if you thought it was. Yeah, there was a, f a few people uh, online when I did the, the help video and that was a, a, a pattern. People saying, Ch change the Y cable, change the Y cable. I mean, I, I, I looked at it and we checked the resistance of it. It wasn't horrendous, but it wasn't very expensive in the grand scheme of things. Like we said, you use it all the time. Well, I have checked it, but I don't think it was, the problem is some of your colleagues were saying that you thought it might have been fuel return valve. The only reason I discounted that is because it stops when it's running. But now the, the non-start when it's hot, you've got the engine off then perhaps. But because it, you, it was cutting out on me when it's running, I dismissed it because that stops the fuel run back when the engine's off, so it starts straight away. So if it stops when it's running, it's got nothing to do with that valve. It's part of the pump as well. I didn't want to put a pump in it, whatever they cost, yeah. just on a whim. Some people, again, with some regularity, were talking about fuel pumps, definitely fuel pump, blah, blah, blah. Um, have you 
been able to like rule that out basically well, I, the I reason guess i've ruled it out is because i've checked the fuel pressure cold right stone cold i've gone up the road and got it roasting hot check the fuel pressure again they're the same figure i've got the same reading then i check the fuel pump delivery because it might be producing pressure but it might not particularly be the right amount of fuel being delivered so i check that hot and cold both the same figure Unfortunately, what I would like to, to have done is fail. Then I could, have, if I had checked it when it failed and it was reading as some experience, yeah, then yeah. I know right it's the fuel pump. But as it was all reading as it should be, I'm a bit averse to sticking a fuel pump in. And I've also checked it as on, on, on load as you can. I've had the gauges on it, you know, driving up <laughs> around the yard. As in, yeah, with the, with the gauge. <laughs> don't do that at home. But like the gauges looking out the rear window around the yard, which is private. Other than changing some bits unnecessarily which i don't like doing mm. then I'm, i think we'll try it like this like i said I've, we've done a load of miles in it since we've changed these since it's been like this yeah yeah it's yeah it's been absolutely gold fingers crossed it stays that way but it's, it's definitely i'm under no illusions this is part of a process and yeah. and we'll see how we get on so joe look thank you for the insight i hope that's really helped people at home who are uh, intrigued and or nosy as to yeah, well, as to what's going on you know you've got one of these and you've got problems with it maybe you know it might send you up the right path things like this just get overlooked don't they and they're not like early 911 some of early 911 you can take the components off and, and fix them or yeah right because really, yeah. it's all unit based plastic or whatever it's just sort of like you say it's triggers broom hopefully it's <laughs> please work <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs>
but these things happen. This is life. It's over a quarter of a century old. Again, I definitely use the car properly. It's driven, not hidden. And that's the big thing I want to ram home message-wise on this video is that, you know, sometimes things happen, even that specialists that work on these cars day in, day out have never seen before, exacerbated by the fact that it doesn't happen all the time. It's infuriating, isn't it? So, fingers crossed now, the next step is stress testing this. In the meantime, it is just absolutely glorious to be driving this car again. I love it so. Thanks for your help, thanks for your interest, thanks for your support. And uh, yeah, goes without saying, we'll see you again soon on this channel. Hopefully with a positive update on how this car's getting on. Thank you to Chris and Joe and Mike and the guys at Right Tune as well. See you again soon.